thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, it, of course, always feels like home. That was, Paralelny Polis was almost our embassy in the early days of Liberland when, when it started. So that's basically our ideological base here in Prague. And uh, we are moving more and more towards the direction where Paralelny Polis is going. And I think it's a natural process with Liberland. And I will tell you a little bit more about that. But first of all, of course, I hope many of you know what Liberland is about, but let me just remind you that it's a, it's a small place, it's a small country between Croatia and Serbia. It's, a, it's exactly seven square kilometers big, so it's three times larger than Monaco. And uh, we proclaimed it on 13th of April, 2015, so it's two and a half years ago uh, when we did that, and we did that purposefully on that day uh, because it was birthday of Thomas Jefferson. We wanted to invoke the spirit of American Revolution. And I was, I was doing that for a very particular reason, because here in Czech Republic I was fighting for, let's say, 10, 12 years very actively, but trying to turn Czech Republic into a little bit freer place. Uh, we started also here with Martin, uh, a political party, libertarian party. We, we translated uh, hundreds of videos, uh, have more than 20 million views on, on YouTube and other channels. But then always the election came and, and nothing really had changed, right? or it actually always change for worse. And I realize it doesn't really make much sense to try to change the established political systems if people are really not striving for freedom. But I also realize there is a, a small percentage in each society that would lift, like to live in a, a free country. And I also knew at the time that it was very hard to get citizenship in places like Monaco, places like Liechtenstein. Let me remind you that Liechtenstein actually accepts only something like 80 80 citizens a year right now, which is extremely limiting. I would like to have another citizenship in Liechtenstein. Maybe I can talk to uh, Prince Hans Adam, and maybe because of me, I, it wouldn't be that hard. But for regular folks, it's almost uh, um, impossible to achieve. And I just came back from Monaco, and uh, do you know how much now the residency card costs? How much you have to put in just to get the residency card? They made a new rule about it. You have to chip in half million euros just to get your ID uh, from the Monaco government. So it's also not for everybody. Uh, all these options to live in these phrase, phrases are very limited. And we thought, let's open up the market. Let's bring a new competition. Uh, let's build a libertarian paradise in a way uh, and invite everybody to, chip, to, to join and chip in whatever they have to offer. And... Uh, yeah, we had an idea that this place, basically, we turn it into a minarchist uh, government so that it would only uh, basically have one place for somebody from police, one place for somebody uh, from justice system, and maybe a small parliament. But, but that changed. That changed uh, actually radically. We also said that we will uh, provide all the services uh, kind of on an Uber basis and make a platform on that, but that changed rapidly. Uh, at the beginning of the year, we started to occupy this, this uh, house. Uh, we had people living there, but that upset Croatia and, and their diplomats and their police forces, so they leveled it down. And maybe you don't know about it, but that was a big inspiration for us as well, because we said, okay, the time of parliaments is over, the time of centralized uh, court system is over, uh, let's move on. And uh, we decided to go fully decentralized and fully crypto. And I think it was a good decision to do that. Again, this was the main, uh, this is the main and probably the best describing quote that describes what Liberland is about. You never change things by fighting the existing re reality. To build something, and you probably know this quote, to build something, you have to build a new model uh, which makes the other things obsolete. And we are not going to rebuild the existing structures we thought that we will, but we are not going to do that. We are going to do it with as limited uh, space as possible. And I will tell you all the exciting projects that we are getting engaged and we are getting partnered with on the decentralization level. But let me get back to what you actually need to have uh, to have a state. You need to have a population, you need to have defined territory, you need to have government and capacity to enter into relations with other countries. So we will basically do all these institutions, but I will tell you how far we got it now on the paper to be decentralized and still be recognizable as a country. And 
we've got a population. You know, the, the, the fact that uh, right now there are two to five people living in Liberland. Some of them are houseboats. Some of them are hiding in bushes. We had yesterday two people sleeping in Liberland. They came on canoe. They were hiding in the bush, but they managed to get in and out without being arrested. So we do have uh, some sort of population living in. But I can also tell you, if I send an email, you know, we're going to Liberland, guys, tomorrow. Uh, 1% out of 1% of that number will go up and they will come there in two weeks and we can actually occupy that. So it's not a big deal to occupy Liberland with an amount of interest that we go globally. And of course, I'm very happy that so many of you uh, from Paralni Polis as well supported and also came to visit Liberland and uh, also signed up for the citizenship. It's a, it's a great uh, duty to also um, successfully push Liberland forward for this community. So we've got now 136,000 people that are eligible for citizenship that, that basically finished all the forms as we required. And we've got 70,000 businesses. Can you imagine that we actually have more businesses interest than for example Liechtenstein had at its peak? They had something like 55,000 businesses incorporated in Liechtenstein and we already have more interest than, than than Liechtenstein had when it was the freest uh, place uh, for incorporation. We have very well defined territory. Uh, the great thing about it that we still are the only entity which claims it. Uh, after two and a half years of pushing back and forth with Croatia, Croatia never mentioned that it claims this territory, which was very much appreciated. Uh, we actually gave both countries half meter, so, so to avoid any kind of territorial disputes uh, with them in that process. And this still stands. Serbia doesn't mind creation of Liberland. They say it's not formed on their territory. And, and uh, the rest of the world basically sees this place as part of Serbia. If you look onto Google Maps, you will see that uh, Liberland is part of Serbia. Yet you can read that on the country that was created on 13th of April by Vitjedlička was norm, not formed on the territory of Serbia. And you can also see that when you look into cadastral maps of Croatia, there is nothing, there is white space. And that hasn't changed since Liberland was founded. We are still the only entity out there, the only nation out there to claim this piece of land. But we are also looking for more territories and you're the first ones to see it. That's a nice island somewhere in Caribbean. I'm not gonna tell you where, but I, I can tell you that, you know, that we cannot fit all the half million people uh, out there in, in Liberland. And there, of course, the planet is huge. It has a lot of space and there are more beautiful places. Uh, than Liberland, but Liberland is beautiful by the way, but there are also some, some quite nice places, so this is one of those spots that we are considering now. We've got government, that's also a bit renewed from last time when I spoke here. Uh, we've got an extremely good team, uh, for example, Thomas Walls is flying in Liberland next weekend, we're going to work with Croatian diplomats. Uh, we've got a big event going on. Uh, Tom Boguslav Wozniak also very actively involved. Uh, American businessman helping us <clears throat> with American diplomacy. The only Czech guy, uh, Jan Purkrabek, who is involved with government, is finance minister. Uh, and Alexander Burodich, <clears throat> formerly Russian, now Lithuanian, and also Liberlandian, is the chairman of our economic council. But what we thought you know, that we will basically reestablish the classical minarchist institution with a classical legal system. But the more we are working on these things, the more we realize that the time of this institution is over. And uh, the more we are teaming up with the existing projects that are pushing the same direction. So I'm, I'm wondering, anybody familiar with uh, the project Kleros? Have not somebody heard about it? I'm glad that I'm introducing it here. Uh, if you read their white paper, it, it is very much in line what our initial proposal for this system was. It is a completely decentralized uh, jurisdiction, basically, which creates juries out of respected members of a community in a random way. They make the decision. If you don't like the decision, you can disapprove that, elevate it to another level, double the number of juries in, in, the, in the court, basically. I think it, it is an extremely smart way how to make a decent, completely decentralized jurisdiction that will make a very just uh, decisions. So that's one of the key things. So we actually don't need much uh, the Ministry of Justice. We will basically have precedents which will be created by a decentralized court system. And we will build up in every single sphere uh, 
since I, I saw you last year, uh, we built up a very strong team. Uh, so the chairman of our economic council is also the founder of a new next generation uh, blockchain that can facilitate most of the transaction uh, with uh, enough speed and with enough, I think, uh, technological uh, advantage over, for example, Ethereum. And I'm looking forward to how we will integrate it into our system. Uh, the Bharat Rao is the founder of Kongpit. He's the, now heading the, uh, the, the effort that we are doing as part of this. We've got uh, Natalia. Uh, she is the CEO of Propi, and that's the key component to, to property registration in Liberland. Uh, we want to incorporate their protocol for registration of land and other properties in Liberland. Uh, we signed the MOU two months ago. Uh, we've got, uh, of course, famous people like David Orban and Brock Pierce on board. Um, Nicholas Nikolaisen, you probably know him, the founder of Bitcoin Swiss. Uh, Janislav, I think he's with us here as well. Uh, he came and then the key, two key people, uh, Luis, uh, the co-founder of Aragon, and I will talk more about that because that's very much connected to our company registry. And also Galia, she is uh, one of the key pe people with Bancor. And I've, I think we found extremely, we put together extremely strong team out of the people that applied for citizenship uh, that can really push Liberland forward and develop all these decentralized systems and put, put them in one ecosystem uh, that, will, uh, that will be really the best jurisdiction that you could find out there. And we do have a, an out timeline with number of things already accomplished. Uh, with domain registry, land registry, registry of ships, uh, all these things are in beta testing right now, and I will talk more about it in the future. But we also want to launch our ICO in April uh, for the whole ecosystem. So that's something which I'm actually announcing here for the first time, uh, that we will do that. And we will properly launch it with the beginning of the year. But you are the first ones to know uh, that's our plan. But, you know, my favorite quote, you can't have a, you can't have a real country unless you have a beer and an airline. It helps if you have some kind of football team or some nuclear weapons, but at the very le least, you need to have a beer. And I already told you that last year. But the great thing about our beer is, is that we are getting it decentralized. So liberal beer is being brewed now by three breweries, and we are getting more. Uh, now Dogma has recently signed a deal, which is a, a very good Serbian brewery, that they will brew liberal beer, uh, an American a uh, company, Resolute, uh, is still in, in negotiation, but they will also, I believe, brew liberal beer very soon. And I think that's also the future, decentralized brewing systems. And this, again, has nothing to do with the Liberland government. I'm happy that there are these activities that are working completely independently of Liberland government. And of course, I'm supporting them. Our Liberland just got two new planes, two new jets. Uh, which is amazing. So if, if Liberland government needs to fly somewhere, we're happy that we have the support of the Jets, but you'll be also able to charter them uh, on the Air Liberland website. By the way, you can also already buy your tech tickets, fly tickets through Air Liberland. You should try it. Maybe you will get better prices than elsewhere. So just go and, and look up Air Liberland. And uh, we still have enormous support from the architectural community. I will just show you a couple of pictures uh, because those are great concepts how Liberland could be developed. And Zaha Hadid, uh, the company, I think that's one of the best companies in the world that could have ever supported Liberland, and I'm very grateful for their support. Uh, this was a, a great uh, uh, project done by Harvard, by, by professor at Harvard University, uh, basically turning the place into kind of a golf course. But why not? You know, we would keep the nature, uh, have a very nice... Uh, futuristic looking uh, place and I don't think any ecologist could complain about the way uh, we are treating this place next to Danube. Uh, that this was uh, a proposal from Argentina, a very nice one, uh, also with lots of green stuff that is already deployed in our cadastro maps. And the other key thing is to have relations with other countries. And that's my role. I'm, I'm still keeping that. It's kind of hard to decentralize that. It really lies with one individual or group of diplomats. And uh, I'm happy that we now have got 87 offices up and running. And Petra, she is with us here. She is managing most of the communication. <laughs> Please give her a hand. <laughs> because it's a, lot, it's a lot of work uh, that, that she's got on her shoulders. Uh, 
Of course, there is a Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but uh, she's doing the tough uh, administrative, administrative work on that. Uh, so you can see the, the darker green are the recently opened uh, representative offices, and we are slowly uh, but steadily covering most of the world, now having more offices than uh, uh, an average European country. I think we've got 15 more than uh, Croatia has right now. This was uh, a month ago when we opened our office uh, in Belgrade. It's close to Hotel Moskva. If you know, if you know Belgrade, uh, feel free to come there as well. We will do the official official opening uh, in a month, probably from now. And I think that's going to be a big event. I'm happy that we will have uh, one machine from General Bytes uh, there as well, just kind of for presentation purposes of, of Bitcoin. And uh, we recently uh, were invited as observatory members to UMPO, uh, which is a kind of a kindergarten for new states. But it, it has very much developed our relations to, let's say, 30 uh, underrepresented or unrecognized countries. Uh, let me show you what, what uh, are all of these territories and, and countries about. For example, uh, Tibet is there, but also Taiwan. Uh, Estonia, for example, was a member of this organization as well. Armenia was a member of this organization. So we are not playing in the Micronation League. We are playing in, in, a, in a league of un, un, underrepresented and unrecognized countries. Uh, so it's kind of unfair to call us a Micronation if there is half million of us. And we actually make business with regular countries or underrepresented countries. We've got lots of support in the European uh, Parliament. Uh, I was invited uh, by the chairman of the ECR in European Parliament for meeting. Uh, we've got good relations uh, with uh, Prince Hans Adam and then Liechtenstein. Uh, they, he said he's looking forward to sit in the uh, UN together, close to each other, because it's Liechtenstein, Liberland, so it will be an al al alphabetical order. Uh, Gary Johnson, that was uh, fun. He said he, that would be the first thing he would do as a president of the United States if he gets elected. Uh, well, he didn't get elected, but it, still it was a nice statement. Uh, that he would recognize Liberland as the first action. And uh, we got lots of support for, in US Congress. I spent 14 days basically uh, lobbying in US Congress uh, with congressmen and senators. And some of them are very helpful and very eager to help us. Uh, I think we are able to put together 15 to 20 uh, people in Liberland caucus in an uh, American Congress, which I think is a good achievement if you consider that we are only two and a half years old. Uh, and probably the biggest thing that happened recently is that we have signed a, a memorandum of understanding with the government of Somaliland uh, very recently. I think it's the first real diplomatic step that Liberland has made. It's only 14 days ago and I actually came directly from the trip uh, where I also, uh, this was the first uh, meeting that I, I did. I flew to Somaliland to sign this deal because they united us. It was an official state visit with all the procedures, with the motorcade of 14 cars and a big show. But it was also a great uh, learning experience because Somaliland is a country twice the size of UK. It is completely independent for more than 25 years. It has a three and a half million people living there, yet nobody recognizes it. It's kind of an amazing story, which basically the diplomatic community didn't feel urged or bothered to recognize Somaliland as an independent country after all the crazy wars going on in Somalia and completely stable Somaliland with a traditional democracy, still it's not recognized. Uh, and they are actually making now deals uh, with uh, Ethiopia, uh, cross-border deals. Uh, they, they just got an investment of $1 billion from Dubai, which is rebuilding their port. And they were very eager to learn, of course, about the cryptocurrencies, about the decentralized governance systems. And that the, the deal that we signed together was exactly about that. We are forming a, a, a commission, basically, which will work together with them on these decentralized technologies. So if you feel like you know, helping out two governments at the same time uh, with your knowledge in the crypto governance sphere, sphere uh, then feel free uh, and please join this, this committee. I would be more than happy to introduce you to the team that we are creating. Also, one of the interesting things from Somaliland was that the first reaction that they got was that you've got so little land and, uh, and you've got even issues with Croatia. You know, why don't you come here and build something here? 
And this was this is a, a very strong point which uh, we are going to explore in our next visit. I hope we will be able to build something like Liberland 2 and that place because honestly, Somaliland is exactly in that uh, at altitude uh, where you can go in, in the middle of winter and have a very nice European summer. And this is something that we need because the winters in, in Liberland are quite cold. <laughs> and the other thing is, is the settlement. And I'm, I'm doing all my, the best that I can uh, to settle Liberland. There is this ongoing effort uh, to settle it. We've got lots of people visiting every single weekend. Uh, we've got people visiting. Uh, next weekend uh, we have uh, basically uh, probably the most interesting visitors. They are the most troubled people in the world. It's a group of 35 people that have visited all countries in the world and they never met together. And this is the first opportunity for them to meet because they're visiting the last country that none of these guys have visited. And it's, it's a great honor, basically, that they recognize Liberland as a country and they are coming together. So we've got facilities now. We can take as many as 150 people on our boats. We've got seven boats now uh, that are available for transport up and down the river. This is the biggest one with 12 beds. Uh, which we can park next to Liberland and we can move it in and out according to security situation. And uh, I need to, you know, the wood, because we didn't have any arrest for year, last year and a half and we didn't have any major crash uh, with Croatian police. Despite us actually coming to Liberland quite frequently, uh, visiting it with journalists, uh, it seems that whenever there is a larger group of Liberlanders going in Liberland, they back off. If there is just a small group, they show the forces, but if we bring more than 30 people, they basically back off and uh, they come later on, which is interesting uh, approach that they're taking. They're also completely independent. We've got 18 solar panels now with five kilowatts of electricity. So it's the first source of power. We are also getting a fresh water directly with reverse osmosis from Danube. And we've got now three people that are basically living there and they, one from Argentina, one from US, one from Canada, like first settlers of Liberland. Uh, yeah, this is from one of the visits. Uh, that was a, a kind of cool event. I think there are a couple people that sp spoke here before me. That's Radim. I think he spoke about the, from the crypto, uh, from the Bitcoin lawyers or how, how the company is called and a couple of his friends that came, I think uh, two months ago. And this is uh, with the, the reporter from Al Jazeera. And that was one of those cases when we didn't have any problem deploying people in Liberland, having a nice afternoon there, because the Croatia police simply disappeared. And we've got lots of uh, fun stuff. This is uh, uh, one of the jet ski that we have there. Uh, it's called Liberland Ranger, so it's supposed to be the first uh, police vehicle for Liberlanders. It's also meant to be a fast evacuation tool. It drives as fast as 120 kilometers an hour, so it's 40 kilometers faster than the fastest Croatian boats, uh, which, is, which is helpful, honestly, you know, when you've got three boats chasing you and you've got your 40 kilometers faster than them, then you don't have any problem. Uh, with them chasing you. And we've got some plans for next year, uh, and I think it might, might be happening even before the end of the year. Uh, we're getting something like a restaurant boat and a small hotel, which we want to park next to Liberland. Okay, that, that was the settlement, but then the institutions, and we la beta launched the beta testing of Liberland company registry. Uh, we haven't really promoted it yet. Uh, we've got these 65,000 people that want to register business, so we wanted to accommodate that pressure. And it, it's amazing because without any promotion, we got uh, tens of uh, companies signed up already. And it's a, a kind of a classical uh, business registry uh, with a very traditional legal framework for uh, business registration. Uh, very fast, something like Delaware style. But the reason we are not launching it fully is that we are waiting for the launch of Aragon. And this is another important thing. Uh, we believe that uh, Aragon is very close to launching a, a decent product, which will basically completely outcompete all the traditional incorporation businesses. Uh, how many people heard about Aragon, by the way, here? Okay, but still, I'm happy that I, I'm telling you something new. It's amazing because this is a first DAO as a service, very user-friendly system where you just click in how many shares you want to have, what will be the decision-making rules, and uh, you've got uh, everything on Ethereum or any other blockchain right away. And that we've got one of the first companies that incorporated in Liberland is Universa, that's that blockchain 
uh, that was recently launched and they're doing ICO, I think, next week. Uh, it is, uh, they, they're dedicating 5% of their funds uh, to development of Liberland, which is pretty amazing. So they're basically doing a, a token swap uh, with Liberland, and I, I believe that will be something that will push our institutions uh, far forward. We've got also a ship registry, and maybe you have noticed uh, that uh, it made it a couple of times to the media, especially uh, with this uh, with this article. Uh, actually, it was there like three times, I believe, and it was a, a situation when the Czech guys basically decided to build their own ship. They couldn't get it registered, so they registered it in Liberland, and they made it uh, contrary to all the immigration from Italy to Ar uh, to Algeria. And everybody was kind of hitting their head, but that was exactly exactly what they have done. But they didn't have any problem. They got caught by Italian authorities one, but they checked their registration uh, with Liberland, and they didn't have any issue with it. And it was very good to also understand that as long as as the as the engine is basically insured, as long as the ship doesn't have any technical problem and it's registered in Liberland, it's, it's completely normal for the authorities to accept Liberland jurisdiction. Uh, we also made a partnership uh, with Propi, and that was the third cornerstone of our partnerships uh, with the blockchain-oriented companies, and they are making a protocol that is uh, making it very easy for you to register any kind of property, but mostly land, and then trade it. And uh, they've got lots of experience. They recently fundraised $15 million uh, for their startup, uh, and I think they're very strong uh, guys. We also have a, a car registry. Uh, that is being experimented here by our supporters here in Czech Republic. But the amazing news is that they also don't have any problems. As long as the car is insured and has a, has a green card, there is no reason why they should be obstructed by uh, Czech police or any other police uh, in European way. I don't want to, you know, like push it, you know, guys, everybody get a, a license plate. But I can tell you that after three months of testing, we didn't have any problem with police. The car was checked three times already, and so far, not, not any single issue. They just showed them the green card, and they let the car go. The car, this one was actually brought from Germany, so that's, uh, that's the... It was previously registered in Germany, unregistered, put on Liberland plates, brought to Czech Republic. So that was the, that was the procedure. But, but again, I wanted to put uh, one of the slides there. I didn't, but you probably know that picture where this horse is tied to a plastic chair and he doesn't move because he believes he can't, right? And I, I feel the more we are discovering all these things, the more we are basically those horses tied to these plastic chairs that we cannot do it. And very recently I heard a story about a Croatian guy that did the same with his own like, personal identity. He just made his own license plate and they also didn't know what to do with him. Uh, so this is about not just you know, pushing forward liberally, this is about decentralizing our things to the level of single individuals. And I'm just trying to open up the way a little bit here. And uh, I just wanted to invite you also to come to Liberland uh, in winter. Uh, we are going to have a nice spa there in 14 days from now and a sauna. Uh, so you can enjoy a whirlpool in the middle of Danube or in Liberland, depending again on the security situation. That will be amazing. And we've got beautiful summers there. We've got incredible, incredible uh, sandy beaches. In Liberland, uh, it is a white sand, it's not mud, I'm serious here. So whoever came to Liberland, you could, you, you, he can testify that that's the case. And uh, from beginning of April, basically, with the celebration of uh, the third anniversary till almost this day in a year, it's, it's a very nice weather and it's great uh, to come there. Uh, so thank you very much. I would be more than happy if anybody asks me any question and uh, of course if, if you have any idea how to push Liberland forward or help it, that's a way to get citizenship. Yeah, yeah well, one, more, one more thing, I just wanted to show you my passport, people don't believe it's working but I actually have a couple visas there which is great and it's good for example to register with Kraken and with some banks, if you're interested, I will tell you which ones are there. So uh, the document itself is also working. Yeah. Since this was the 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the document that we are issuing. That's the visa from Kenya. <laughs> okay, please. So uh, I wanted to make the observation that it is very appropriate uh -huh. that your first diplomatic interaction was with Somalia, um, because in in the United States we. Um, Whenever I make, whenever I or anyone else makes a libertarian argument, the go-to response is, "Well, why don't you just move to Somalia?" <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, the real question I had was, uh, how do you plan on doing uh, defense of this nation? So, for example, you mentioned that uh, the Croatian authorities bulldoze the building on your uh, on your land. Yeah, well, the. Apparently, the, the system that we have put in place, uh, the three major weapons that we are using, and that's the beer, uh, beautiful women, and that flowers, is working on and off. That's uh, that has been tested now. Uh, so when, for example, and I didn't put the pictures there, but we also had the finals of the Miss Motorsport International there. We brought 35 beautiful ladies, and we also put them in Liberland, I cannot show the picture because of my first lady now, unfortunately, but... Uh, <laughs> and that, uh, that is a situation in which, again, the Croatian police backed off and didn't show up. If I go there with two people, they, they actually see all the, all the telephone numbers and all they, they monitor the whole area, but they also see when there is 35 people and it would be actually coming with two international media they don't have a reasonable way how to deal with that situation. And that's the way we are basically pushing ourselves forward. We don't want to make a big step because we are also not ready. We, our institutions are not ready. We need to finalize our legal framework. Uh, so we are not pushing for it the hard way. We could have pushed it. We could have made a big concert for 2,000 people and push all the people in Liberland. But I'm, I'm not pushing for it because Liberland is still there. Nothing is changing. Croatia is not claiming it. They're just protecting it for us at this stage. Uh, and that's very much appreciated. So what we're doing, and I think that our strategy actually works well, is to keep on uh, with that strategy, be very friendly to Croatia, show positive attitude, show that we can bring lots of business, that we can help to deal with the high unemployment rate, and uh, keep on having a good uh, picture in the media. And one day we will simply occupy Liberland, and I don't believe we will have any security issues with them. I hope I answered your question. Please. And thank you for presenting, very inspiring. Uh, so eventually, do you anticipate you will be recognized by Croatia? Well, by the way, today is the Independence Day of Croatia. We just sent them congratulation letter, as we are doing uh, <laughs> with every... every... <laughs> <laughs> and you know they've got the uh, historical experience what it takes to gain the statehood they learned the hard way they did it uh, through a kind of a bloody war with Serbia uh, and again you know the I think we are, are able to prove that it's possible to do it without bloodshed and uh, it's possible to do it in the nice way and that why shouldn't we be recognized for that at, at some point even by Croatia or especially by Croatia, right? Okay. I'd like to ask, what are your thoughts on Transnistria? Because I visited it two weeks ago. Oh, I don't place, think I'm... We don't have official position on Transnistria. That, that I understand, but you have no thoughts about it at all, or any observations? Um, no, we are not in contact with them in any way. Uh, and uh, right now it's not our major... Uh, I know a lot of people that visit it. Uh, but we don't, you know, we don't consider them as a, as a partner for, for now. Yes, please. Uh, yes, you did mention the number of applications uh -huh. you received. Uh, how many citizens does Liberlen have right now? As in how many passports have been issued? Well, we're issuing our passports only to our diplomats right now. Uh, yes. So that's uh, roughly, um, I think, 85 or 100 passports. And we've got, I think, roughly 450 regular citizens as, as of today. So those are people basically that, that did something uh, that helped to push Liberland forward. Uh, if you want to do it the boring way, but it's also appreciated, you can chip in $5,000. It will earn you 5,000 merits and uh, you will also get the citizenship from Liberland. 
And I'm happy that you know, a couple of people has also done it because that helps us move things forward. So far we have spent, and then just when it's connected to this, something like $350,000 altogether on Liberland. I think we are the most cost-effective libertarian campaign ever, if you just consider us a libertarian campaign, but we are actually building a country. Uh, another question on your uh, membership, your uh, new citizens, pathway to citizenship. Uh -huh. You mentioned uh, some forms that had to be filled out. I'm imagining a questionnaire. Could uh -huh. you tell me anything about what it's, you're looking for? It's apart from just helping very easy. It's very citizen? easy. You fill it in uh, on liberland.org and um, it takes five minutes. Uh, you know, you can just register and then we consider something like e-resident and that's where we want to go with, uh, we want to go as close as the system that is done by Estonia, but uh, we are preparing it with the decentralized identity system based on Uport, and that's also something that should be done before the April. Uh, and uh, we want to provide our residents uh, uh, with an easy way to interact. Uh, so that's for everybody who registered on, on liberland.org. Uh, but uh, if you want to get the citizenship, that's like an, another stage where you also get a passport. Uh, that basically make, make, means that you have to make something uh, for Liberland. Martin, Martin is the advisor on our economic council. That's one of the ways how to, how to get citizenship. And does your citizenship require you to surrender your passport of your origin? Of course, origin? Not. Of course not. We are not jealous like other countries like not. Slovakia okay. or United States. Uh, I, I, it's one of the basic ideological things that we are pushing forward. That Of course, the more citizenships you have, the more free you are. And of course, it's reasonable to have residency in the freest of these uh, places where you have citizenship. Thank you. Uh, hi. Uh, first of all, I'm really a big fan of uh, the things you're doing. I've been uh, following uh, the concept of liberal land for, uh, for a while, and uh, I'm really impressed with it. So um, I have two questions. Okay. Uh, first of all, about taxations. Um, are you going to be like 100% free of taxes and uh, let the economy economy be completely decentral and uh, private companies like uh, take over like the structural uh, parts and everything or are you going to take a small percentage of uh, I'm not sure what and uh, use it yourself to build infrastructure? Well, that's a very good question. And uh, we are going to stick with the concept of voluntary taxation, yet we are going to incentivize our citizens to pay taxes by a simple uh, simple system, uh, basically, and that's the merit system. And uh, the merits, uh, they will have two stages. One of them will be a currency, which will be freely tradable, and another one is that you will lock your merits with government. That means you pay taxes with your merits, basically. But you're not losing them. They, they become your shares in liberal and government, and they become your voting power in, with liberal and government. But they also become your collateral for the actions that you are taking in liberal and jurisdiction. So this decentralized court system will be able to take away those merits as a form of compensation for some crimes that you might have committed in liberal and jurisdiction. And that's probably the only role uh, that we could have come up with as, a, as a still the roles that uh, the jurisdiction itself could play. It could be kind of a insurer, internal insurer of the justice uh, between the subjects that are uh, working in labor land. But of course, the ideal situation is that this justice system works so good that it doesn't make any sense to make crime because you would get almost instantly hit back. And uh, this is something which I think is an important thing. You wouldn't believe how many crooks I actually met since Liberland started. Like I never had uh, an experience before, but I met people that just came in and, and they wanted to harm either me or people that you know are, are in Liberland. And we need to have a, a clear and fast way how to uh, deal with it, especially inside of Liberland. And uh, I had a second question. Okay. Like. Um, Maybe that sounds a little bit silly, but uh, I had uh, this vision like uh, if I'm like older, I would like to uh, like to get my uh, pilot license and just uh, fly from country to country. Uh -huh. And uh, just when I heard uh, that you're going to think about acquiring like this island and uh -huh. uh, going to Somalia, uh, I had this vision like. Uh, uh, are you going to think about an infrastructure for uh, flights so? Uh, citizens of Liberland could move freely from these different places. 
uh, have you? Well, we've got we've got the Air Liberal and, and it's growing rapidly now. It has th three private jets in in the in the company basically involved. Uh, we've got two smaller propeller planes uh, that are based here in in, in Czech Republic, and uh, it's kind of an association of Liberal and plane owners. Uh, which is um, pretty exciting, and I think it might grow to a regular kind of decentralized Uber system later on for planes or something like that. I'm not, I'm not stakeholder of that company. I'm just promoting them uh, when I'm traveling around and I'm trying to get them some business through that. But uh, I hope that, that that this is the system that where they are going, and that's what they mentioned to me actually that they are working on basically another kind of Uber-like chartered uh, system for planes. And I'm, of course, they will be transporting people between different liberal and territories globally. Yes. How, how do you look for the, uh, for places where it's, it could be appropriate to do some, some some this kind of initiative? Well, I think I've visited more than 60 countries so far, and uh, that's of course one of the topics. And I'm, I'm meeting different people. Uh, you know that uh, Roger Ver and Olivier. Uh, just recently started an uh, initiative, uh, Free Society. Uh, I'm in touch with them. Roger Ver is one of our key supporters uh, with Liberland from early days. Uh, so there are lots of initiatives that are striving to get more land. It, of course, it is a big kind of an issue to get land on this planet, especially which, the one which includes sovereignty. Uh, that's why we went all the way from beginning and we just kind of grabbed a piece of land which was unoccupied and unclaimed as a fast way to do it because I, I when I before I started Liberland we learned about a lot of things and we for example learned that Onassis family was trying 25 years to start their own country just with a big pile of money. They were traveling around discussing with heads of states and they were never able to achieve it because in order to start a country you really need to have a nation. Uh, without a nation and with just a pile of money uh, the diplomatic community and the systems that are here you know, kind of rejecting you. So you can you can basically buy an island uh, like Richard Branson and basically have a very free place there, but you cannot declare it as your country because you don't have the nation backing your efforts. And uh, this is why we, we did Liberland as we did it. But again, we are very open to co collaborate and cooperate with any serious initiative uh, that is pushing the same direction. And if, you know, somebody is faster or better prepared to basically launch a very free society. I'm ready to support it all the way. And it's not a, a competition. Uh, it is a co co collaboration. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe my, I wasn't clear. It's uh -huh. how, how do you came to know that this piece of land and okay. also the island on the Caribbean is... is no, the island in Caribbean is not, uh, it's not a unclaimed territory. It just comes with a very special economic zone uh, points. And it might be very interesting for that, uh, because it comes with a lot of sovereignty. Uh, but it's not the case of Liberland. It would be something like holiday, holiday resorts for Liberlanders with, with a lot of uh, freedom, but not with sovereignty. Uh, the other thing is have a full diplomatic status with other country. That's very interesting, and that's a kind of a go way around. So we are kind of protected by a diplomatic status that you could build on some others, some other territory. Uh, and that's uh, the, the thing that we are exploring. But with Liberland especially, it was easy. I just put it to Google. I was looking for no man's land. And the first article is Wikipedia, no man's land. So I, I picked, uh, I first we picked a place in Africa, which I'm quite happy that we didn't go to. Uh, that was uh, Jeremy Heaton that went there. And he kind of inspired us to follow our idea a bit further. Uh, because he was quite successful with media. And then we picked uh, Liberland because there was only a free place in Europe that we could get with a decent size, with the best legal background that we could get. Uh, so that was an easy pick. And also it was hard shape that really got me at the beginning. Um, so the, you, you mentioned that, uh, you know, you don't, uh, so if you have a pile of money, that's not enough to start a common country. But uh, maybe now, the times have changed, but uh, when the Onassis family was there, you know, it was, it, 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 I, you know, I'm wishing everybody who is doing that good luck. Now you have residents, uh -huh. so you could, if you have a project that uh, there's a land or an island that can, we can, you know, buy, you just 
I think you can get the pile of money for that project. That's not that's not a problem. But the getting a, a sovereignty is a problem. Like uh, you can make a free trade zone agreement, getting rid of a lot of things, but you will be un still under the constitution of some other country. Yet with Liberland, we are kind of special in because we declared our sovereignty on an unoccupied piece of land which was unclaimed, and that, that's a very let's say. Um, very out of the ordinary situation, which was very good uh, that we took it. And do you think if Liberland would buy mm -hmm. a piece of land there, could be Liberland be registered as the owner of that land in the other country? Of course, of course, it can be, it can be, and then it, we will be pursuing a diplomatic status. But it is only because we are already a country. Right. If you do it as a private individual or as a company, you can also negotiate some uh, some status, but it will not be as strong as, as you're doing it as a country. Yeah. Okay. But uh, so when we are going now to Somaliland, we are considered a country, which is a, a completely different negotiation position if, than if you go there as a company. I, mean, I, I I think it is a backup plan because imagine that uh -huh. you know Croatia you know occupies Liberland, but they cannot op occupy a land which is legally owned by Liberland. Yeah. So that's what I guess. Well, of course, you know, the international law is anarchy, so it's about power. And uh, it's about, today is more about media power than anything else, right? The, the, the tanks, they also work, but uh, if we get the whole international community behind us, and of course our claim to this piece of land is already much stronger than the, the one that Croatia could ever have, especially if they keep on not claiming this territory even after we claimed it for two and a half years. So, you know, the, the thing is that, like, somebody told, told me, please, you know, unclaim it, you know, take it back. I can't, you know, this is Liberland. Nobody can take it back. This place is always going to be Liberland, no matter what's going to happen to it. And, of course, the states have different statuses. Tibet is now not control, in not control of Tibet itself, yet the government is still functioning. Uh, yeah, I hope to uh, meet the leadership someday as well, uh, these guys. Uh, but, uh, or, or you've got when places like Taiwan, which they have full control, yet they're very uh, restricted in their recognition because China is pushing everybody to unrecognize Liberland. So, yeah, well, okay. thank you. Uh, there is a very good article, by the way, about our statehood and our claim by Chicago Journal of International Law. And I will, I've got a couple of copies of our brochure, but it's online. If you want to take it, you can study it. I will give it to you. Uh, I can also give you one, but we are free free to pass it pass it by. Hi, early in the talk, you uh, you mentioned in passing, I think, uh, a little bit of Czech politics. I'm familiar with some of the Czech politics at uh, the time you were talking uh, about the time that uh, Liberland was founded and set up. Um, but an ideological question here: Could you tell me a little bit, or would you talk a little bit about the freedom that you're actually seeking? the freedoms that you're trying to establish in Liberland? Well, we really believe that it's possible to start a structure with a voluntary tax system, which is a, a bit radical idea. But Sorry, uh, I, my hearing... Yeah, yeah well, language we, we believe that it's possible to start a, a state structure with voluntary tax system, which is a completely new idea, right? A state system with... With, with voluntary, voluntary, voluntary tax. Okay. tax system. So a place where the government would not put you in jail if you don't pay your 50% fair share. And you would, you would consider that yeah. the key characteristic for the libertarian country? Well, that's one of the, one of the yes. things that, that I think we are just taking this to the, uh, all the way. And I also believe that it's possible to run functional uh, systems of governance with as little as 3% of GDP. And that we could actually be able to fundraise this system just by uh, voluntary payments. But what we are doing, we are incentivizing our citizens to pay taxes by making them shareholders of the country that they are living in. So you cannot now donate to Liberland without basically getting a share of Liberland, which is, a, a, I think, a nice concept, uh, which will make a nice decision-making structure uh, of people that are really, their incentives are with the alum, alignment of the country they are living in. So, you know, we're calling this system of a double democracy. It's a, it's a concept developed by Professor Bell, we actually came up with the same concept, but then we figured out that somebody else already uh, came up with it. So the shareholders of Liberland are making the positive decisions, yeah. yet the citizens, but everybody, every citizen has to be at least uh, a partial shareholder, the citizens can veto the decisions of the shareholders. 
So it, I think it's a very fair structure in which the positive, again, the positive decisions are pushed forward by the people that have created the country and they have paid taxes and they contributed to the creation. So they are not going to do stuff that would hurt them. But on the other hand, they cannot do an action which would be against the will of majority. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, Estonia states really clearly that their e residency is not residency and is not uh, tax residency, it's uh -huh. just an ID. Uh, will your e residency be something similar or you want to provide proper tax residency? No, well, with the Estonian companies, you've got the full tax residency for the company, right? You, you are paying taxes for in the Estonia. company, yes. Yes, yes. And uh, in order to open this company, you have to be e-resident. And we are also making a similar kind of identities. If you just register your email with Liberland, you basically become an e-resident because you already get your merit accounts uh, with this and you, you already get kind of a traction of your action. And you can, with this a merit account, you can also open your company. So we already have that. But before we promote it, we really want to upgrade it uh, to a level that people can keep more privacy. Uh, by using, for example, Uport uh, as a, as a, a, and also single sign-on, so you can use all the liberal and services basically by one click, um, but keeping a little bit more privacy on your site. So this is this is for company, but for individuals. What, what do for individuals, do? if you want to. Uh, of course, you will have to be living in Liberland in order to be able to claim uh, tax residency. Uh, so that's a bit difficult right now, but uh, I think it's going to be more and more realistic uh, during the next year. Uh, and uh, the question is how the other countries will recognize it. And uh, it's, uh, well, you know, what I'm advising people, just use cryptocurrencies, an anonymous one, and you're getting yourself to similar uh, status anyway. Can I, in the three years that you've been set up so far, have you had any uh, marriages or births or deaths of citizens in uh, Liberland? The, the, the marriage is a big thing, and I've got three couples that want to marry in Liberland, but we will do it in the spring. Uh, the spring so, weddings are good, I hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The spring will be beautiful. I think it will be like a week before the anniversary, so we will have a first marriage there. Uh, there's a couple in uh, Lithuania, there is a couple in Turkey, and there is an American couple that want to marry in Liberland. And I also promised my first lady that we will marry in Liberland, so I think we should do that. Are, aren't you afraid that when somebody is going to pay lots of taxes, mm -hmm. they will have like big share and they can kind of... That's, that's a kind of nice situation, you know. I know, it's, it's worth of... Yeah. But you can then, then squeeze it to their way and it can become actually that company's mm. li, uh, okay. Liberland. Right? Uh, well, let me, let me explain you the structure that we have come up with. So when we are do, going to do the ICO, basically, and giving an opportunity to people to buy shares in Liberland, we are only going to do a 10% a year. That way, we are going to make sure that nobody is going to take over Liberland like right away because the ICO is not going to cover all the tokens. And uh, I think this is actually a good system in which we can make the financing stable for Liberland for 100 years to come, maybe even much longer. Even though the government would have a smaller and smaller share, meaning government, the founders of Liberland or the official original corporation that is pushing Liberland now would make its share smaller and smaller because of the appreciation of the currency there but the budget would still rise if it's able to spend only 10 percent of its holdings a year it will take seven years or eight years to give up a majority control and i think in those seven years of stable financing we are able to do extremely beneficial actions for the country with lots of resources that will be visible either you know buying islands and developing it or making deals with other countries and so on so uh, you cannot basically get a control over liberland because it is a quasi corporation right now which is only giving small shares a year but of course if you're going to be a billionaire and every single year you will try to buy off every 10 percent then you will accumulate uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, shares and i think it's fair you know, because you are the biggest contributor uh, to the country that you're that you're supporting, and it's fair that you're gonna in seven years have a majority control over it. Okay. You want a microphone? Okay. 
Yes, I wonder about second generation Liberlandians. They they're born without without any merits. Yes, but they will be, be citizens. Uh, so they will have to basically earn their share in the society in order to get, in order to be uh, and the, the merits will be inheritable. So that's something as well which is important. But and I believe the citizenship. The citizenship you will get it automatically as a liberlander, but you will not get merits just by being born. But you will inherit them from your parents. That's something which we want to keep uh, attraction on. It will be just like a regular share in corporation which you uh, inherit from your parents. But it's a very good question. There was a big debate about it internally. All right. Uh, hi, I have a shallow question. Like, uh, what are two two best ways, let's uh -huh. say, to travel to Liberland okay. for somebody? And how much does the Liberland beer costs? Well, Liber beer was actually sold here, I think, uh, four months ago. They stopped because they started to have their own beer. But I think it was the same price as the, the beer of, of uh, Parayani Polis. So something like 60, 70 crowns. And the best way to travel to Liberland is, of course, take care of Liberland. You can land as close as eight kilometers away from Liberland. It takes uh, two hours. Pardon? Uh, Serbia. It's eight kilometers from Liberland. There is a, a, a very nice place where you can land now internationally. And uh, the tickets of Air Liberland are also affordable. And it's very convenient to fly there. And the best, of course, is to fly with me because then you get a special offer. <laughs> Unfortunately, this was the last question. We need to prepare okay. the room for the upcoming streaming session. So thank you very much for your questions.